to hear Māori ora, e te whānau a te karaiti, e nā mana, e nā reo, e raurangatirama, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. A very warm welcome as we gather here in Cathedral Square in the name of Christ, as we gather for the installation of Bishop Peter Carroll as the Anglican Bishop of Christchurch. Um, I would encourage everyone to come in a bit further if you can. There's a little bit of room in the front. But uh, we are delighted and excited to be able to conduct this installation in front of our cathedral here in the square. I'd like to acknowledge and welcome members of Parliament who are here today, who worship the Mayor of Christchurch, Leanne Dazil, and uh, City Councillor Dion Swicks. A very warm welcome to you. Uh, a welcome to our ecumenical partners in Christ, church leaders representing our partners in mission, especially Barry Ayers, who will be offering a welcome on behalf of all churches in Canterbury and Westland. It's great to be able to welcome among us uh, our Archbishops Philip Richardson and Archbishop Don, spiritual leaders of the Anglican Church nationally, and also Pihopa Richard Wallace, Bishop of Te Waiponamu, our tikanga partner, tēnā koe, and welcome to you, and welcome to all our bishops of this church present today. And I extend a warm welcome to all who are visitors from beyond our Diocese of Christchurch, those who are here from near and far, from around New Zealand, and those visiting from beyond our shores. Welcome to you, and we trust you enjoy your stay with us. And of course, a very warm welcome to members of Bishop Peter's family, especially to Teresa, Leah, Bridget, Andrew and Alice, and your wider family and loved ones. A warm welcome to you today. And we'd also like to acknowledge those who are involved in the Cathedral Reinstatement Project who are with us. And finally, a welcome to Cathedral Chapter, the, the, the Cathedral Choir, the clergy and people of God representing the many ministry units of this Diocese of Christchurch and also to the citizens of Christchurch. Welcome to this short service of installation. I hope you can all see a copy of an order of service which um, has been handed out, hopefully. Um, and we're now going to uh, follow through the order of service, fairly much unannounced. Grace and peace to you from God. God to you with truth and joy. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. For him be thou my vision.
be seated. Please feel free to be seated. Et a whānau, we, we present, present to you Bishop, Bishop Peter, Peter, who has, who has come, come to be installed as Bishop of the Diocese of Christchurch, and who is now authorised and empowered to exercise the authority and pastoral responsibility of the Bishop in this Diocese of Christchurch. The Chancellor declares the certificates of election and ordination are valid. Archbishops, I declare Bishop Peter to have been validly nominated and sanctioned in accordance with Title A, Canon 1 of the Code of Canons of the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia, and that the certificates of, of election and ordination are valid. Thanks be to God. <laughs> That's a relief. <laughs> All round. <laughs> Peter, Bishop in the Church of God and our Bishop, we welcome you to your cathedral church at 100 Cathedral Square, the symbol and centre of your pastoral, liturgical and teaching ministry in this diocese. I thank you for your welcome and I promise with God's help to be a faithful shepherd and servant among you. I pray that the ministry we share may be pleasing to God and may strengthen the life of this diocese and the whole Church of God. So we've just seated uh, Bishop Peter in his cathedra, which is the seat of the bishop, and given him a diocesan crozier, the symbol of office of the Diocese of Christchurch. And now together we say, Bishop Peter, we, the people of this diocese, receive you as our bishop. Be seated among us as our pastor and leader. May the Lord stir up in you the flame of holy love and the power of faith that renews the world. Amen. I now call on the Mayor of Christchurch, Leanne Dalziel, to speak. Ena mana, ena reo, e rauranga tira ma, tene te mihi kia koto, i te kopapa o te rā tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā rā tātou katoa. May I acknowledge Archbishops Philip Richardson and uh, Don Tamahiri, all the bishops, clergy, members of the Diocese of Christchurch, distinguished guests and all who have gathered to celebrate this day. Today I stand here on behalf of all civic leaders and the people of Christchurch, Canterbury, Westland and the Chatham Islands to say welcome, welcome to our new bishop, the Right Reverend Dr Peter Carroll, the ninth Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Christchurch. Congratulations. It is hard to believe that you are only the ninth Bishop to serve this diocese since Bishop Harper arrived in 1856. Thank you very much for choosing this place this special place, Fitterer, Cathedral Square, for your installation. It is why we are New Zealand's first city. As a bishop, 
you take on a civic leadership role too. So on behalf of all civic leaders, we look forward to working with you in the spirit of collaboration and our common purpose, the good of our city and regions. Nō mai, haere mai, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā ratato katoa. Bishop Peter, it has an interesting ring to it. <laughs> Bishop, uh, we welcome you on behalf of the collective of churches across this community. Uh, if I had a good singing voice, um, I would sing Welcome Home, because I heard you admit in the uh, earlier service today that you are a Christchurch boy. So a very warm welcome home to you. And also, uh, this is an opportunity to celebrate a very significant event in a significant uh, week. During this week, we have been reminded on Wednesday, the day of Waitangi, that we are part of a bicultural nation that is journeying together, learning from history and developing our relationship with each other, and also moving into a multicultural understanding of what it means to be New Zealand in this day and age. And Peter, into this context, you bring your willingness to collaborate, not just with the church, but also with the wider community. And I wish you well in that context. This is also a significant place as we gather here in Cathedral Square. And uh, Bishop, you have uh, talked this morning at the service of ordination of your willingness to bring healing and wholeness in the midst of brokenness. And it's very symbolic that we stand in the midst of brokenness. And I believe in your calling, uh, you will commit yourself to bring healing to the wider body of Christ and also the wider community, the people of this diocese and this wider community. As for the building, we'll leave that to you. <laughs> you also mentioned this morning, uh, Bishop, that um, you were you had a symbol of the waka and guiding the waka through stormy waters. And in the context of your diocese and the Anglican Church of New Zealand, uh, we understood and appreciated what you meant. But we want to say to you today, on behalf of all of the churches of this community, that we are with you and that you are not in an alone waka, you are part of an amada. And on behalf of all of the churches of this wider community, I want to wish you well and remind you that we not only pray for you, but we pray with you and intend to work alongside you. God bless you and your family as you accept this commitment. Let's pray as I lead in this collect. Almighty God, by your grace alone we are accepted and called to your service. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and empower our calling through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, 
but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee, knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, beginning at verse 31. The disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest. But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thanks be to God. I greet all of you and thank you all for participating this afternoon in this installation service. You have come from many places near and far representing many communities and churches and schools in our diocesan region. 
and you've illustrated your coming with many banners. You've come from all parts of this diocese, but also all parts of the Anglican Church in these South Pacific Islands. Thank you. Under the leadership of Dean Lawrence and our diocesan manager, Edwin Boyce, and many hard-working peoples on their teams, much hard work has gone into arranging this installation. Thank you so much for what you have done. Thank you, Mayor Leanne, and thank you, Barry Ears, for your kind remarks. I pledge myself to work cooperatively with civic and church leaders in the regions of our diocese. It is a great privilege and a huge responsibility to stand here as the ninth Anglican Bishop of Christchurch. But I do so gladly because of the faith placed in me by this diocese and the, and the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia. A significant part of my new role is a ministry of encouragement and facilitation in the reinstatement of Christchurch Cathedral which stands behind me today. Battered and broken by the Christchurch quakes, this cathedral remains standing. Today I am not able to be installed inside the cathedral, but I am glad to be installed as close to it as safety permits. One day we will be inside the cathedral again, and when we reopen it, I will stand outside the main doors, eager to bang on the doors with my crozier, a custom normally associated with an installation service. That reopening will be some years away, during which many challenges will be overcome by the terrific teams working on the cathedral's reinstatement. Thank you for what you are doing. Having made the decision in the 2017 Synod of this diocese to reinstate the cathedral, we are only able to speak in this hopeful way about the reopening of the cathedral because of the generosity of fellow New Zealanders. On behalf of the Diocese of Christchurch, I take this opportunity to publicly thank those who found a way forward for the reinstatement of the cathedral. I thank our local MPs who a few years ago pledged cross-party support to finding a way forward. I thank the New Zealand Government for committing funding to the reinstatement. On behalf of the New Zealand public, the Government has been generous and helpful and I thank our fellow Kiwis for supporting this great project. I have personally conveyed this message of thanks to Megan Woods, Minister for Christchurch, who is unable to be present this afternoon. I thank Mayor Leanne Delzell and the Christchurch City Councillors, present today, thank you, for your support for the work which lies ahead of us. And through you, I thank the ratepayers of Christchurch City. We value your support not only in terms of finance, but also in terms of cooperation and goodwill. I thank the many people and organisations who are pledging their support for the reinstatement. Between the government, the council and public benefactors, we will achieve our common goal. Christchurch Cathedral is an icon of our city and region, and working together, we Cantabrians will reinstate it. We'll accept help from outside Canterbury, though. <laughs> At the heart of our new city, we will have an enduring link with the settlement of 1850, as well as a continuing sacred space in which God is worshipped, the love of Christ is proclaimed, and the prayers of the people are said. It is my great hope that this project will be completed within my time as Ninth Bishop of Christchurch. The greater project to which God has called me, however, is to serve Christ in his mission in our whole region and beyond. As Anglican Bishop of Christchurch, I am honoured to have a leadership role within Christ's great mission, the mission which both scripture readings speak to. I acknowledge in the spirit of the gospel reading, which talks about reaping where others have sown, my eight predecessors, four of whom I have been privileged to know personally, and one of whom, Bishop David Coles, is here present today. I ask your prayers that I may not only be part of reaping what others have sown, but also sow good seeds for the future which others may reap. The mission of Christ is that every person might be drawn into the unending love of God. I pray that I may be a faithful witness to that divine love, which Christ demonstrated on the cross in a sacrificial death for our sake. The existence of the church is a living testimony 
to the raising of Christ from the dead. The living Christ continues to inspire the mission of Christ to which the church is called, a mission for the gospel, for justice, and for serving the last, the least, and the lost. Tomorrow I will speak further about the mission of Christ in the Diocese of Christchurch in each of our services in the Transitional Cathedral. 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 5 p.m. You're most welcome unless you are going to worship at your local parish church, in which case that's your priority. All the rest are welcome. Thank you again for being part of this great occasion today. I look forward to working together with you in the mission of Christ. May God be glorified in all we do and say, in Christ's name, Amen. Uh, we come now to the prayers of the people and those who are participating in the prayers, if they would please come forward and be ready to speak at the microphone. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are called to proclaim the story of God's love and mercy, and above all, the gospel of our Saviour Christ. I ask your prayers for Bishop Peter, who has come among us to preach the word of God and to teach the faith. Lord, in your mercy. We are called to be a sign and witness of God's purpose for all human family. I ask your prayers for Bishop Peter, who has come among us to share our joys and sorrows, to counsel, reconcile, to, and comfort, to nurture our di diocesan family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for the congregations and communities and chaplaincies of this diocese and for Peter, that he will encourage and support all the baptized in their gifts and ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for the committees and organizations of the diocese and for Peter, that in wisdom and humility, in discernment and good humor, we may build up the Church of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for us all, that together we may learn the ways of the kingdom, partnered in worship and practiced in love. Following the example of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, may we welcome strangers, stand with outcasts, and support those who are broken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I ask your prayers for the regeneration of the Diocese of Christchurch, that across its ministry units, people of younger generations will respond to the call of Jesus to live for him and for others in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, the giver of all gifts, you have made us one body. Bring us to unity of faith and maturity of life, that we may build one another up in Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit is one God, now and forever. Amen.
Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Haere i runga i te rangamarie, i runga i te araha, mei te nāko, hihiko, ki te mahi, ki te ariki. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We, we go, go in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Ka haere mātou i runga i te ingoa o te karaiti. <laughs>